Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com and in this video we're going to talk about the game manager and we're going to go ahead and create one for our game. So for those of you who don't know what a game manager is, basically it's just a script that's going to help us to manage our game, which is why it's called that. The point of it is to store data, to handle game state, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a minute. If you remember when we were working on our game previously, we created a couple of scripts, well, mostly one script, for our current scene, which is the main game scene. If we expand the scenes folder and we take a look in the world folder, you'll notice we've got the world scene manager. And just as kind of a refresher, we don't have too much in here other than a droid that it's storing and an async operation called load scene which leads to another scene we haven't created yet called scene capture. So not terribly much in there. Well, when we move between scenes, how do we know what the player's info is? How do we know anything else that's being stored, like inventory, permissions, or any other number of variables that we could think of? The answer to that is one global game manager. This game manager should be used very carefully because typically having a big global script is considered bad practice, but the game manager is an exception because of its important role and its specific purposes. So it's gonna help us move seamlessly between scenes. Another thing that it's helpful for is it helps us to give a point of reference for objects and scripts so that they're only grabbing what we want them to. What do I mean by that? Well, let's consider our player. So right now, we have one player on the map, right? So it's pretty clear which object we're controlling and which object we're allowed to manipulate in detail. Let's suppose, though, that we set our game up so that we can see other players on the map. Well, if we have certain actions that happen when we are tapping on our player or doing anything else with it, how do we know which player is our player, because they'll all be of class player unless we set it up with some extra class like external player or something weird like that. So we can use the game manager script to contain a player field where we can just drag and drop our player. And first off, we'll always know which player is our player. Second off, we can move our player between scenes, which is really important for avoiding a lot of extra work on our code's part. Another benefit is that game managers can help us to manage the state of the game. So whether or not the player has started the game, whether the game's running, if our game had a pause function, then that would be managed by the game manager. So hopefully you're starting to see how important a game manager is and the possibilities for it. It can also be used to indicate whether or not assets need to be downloaded or whether the game is shutting down, starting up, you, you get the idea. So let's go ahead and create one. To do that, let's go ahead and right click on our utilities folder. And we're gonna create a new c -sharp script. And we're just gonna name this Game Manager. And I'm going to double click on Game Manager. And that should open it up in my IDE. To start, let's get rid of these comments above Start and Update. In fact, let's go ahead and just get rid of them altogether. At this point in time, we don't really need them. We're going to create one serialized field. So type square brackets serialized field private player, and we're just going to name this current player with a lowercase c. And then we're going to go ahead and create a function private void awake. And when this script wakes up, we want to make sure that there's a player assigned because our game won't run without a player. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. So we'll just say assert dot is not null. 
and we're going to pass in current player. And that's all we really need for this awake function. So we're going to create a getter for our current player. So let's just type public player with a capital P current, oops, current player with a capital C brackets, get, and then another set of brackets. And we're just going to say return current player. For now, that's really all we need to do in our game manager script. So let's save this. And then we'll minimize it to go back to Unity. And then from here, we need to make a quick change because I noticed a problem. Our singleton class is all wrong. And so things aren't going to work the way that we expect them to at this point in time. Now let's stop and think about that script that we just made. We only want there to be one game manager, right? Well, we should have made it a singleton then. But I noticed a problem with our singletons. So let's go fix that real quick. I'm going to double click on the singleton class down here under utilities. These private type T instances also need to be static. So let's update them to be so. And because they're static, it's not going to like this whole game object deal. So let's take that out. And the don't destroy on load, we're going to switch to instance. Perfect. Now it's just going to ignore any object trying to take over the singleton. And it's only going to care about this one instance. So let's save that. And now we will switch back to Unity. And let's open our game manager back up. And we're just going to take this mono behavior that it extends, and we're going to switch this out with type singleton of game manager. Now there should just be an instance of the game manager with a current player. So save that, and let's swap back to Unity. Now that we've got our game manager class set up, the question becomes, where are we going to put it? Well, there. There are about a billion different ways that people get this set up, and everybody's got their own way to do it. For me, it's mostly situational. But in this case, I want to show you another technique and a way that some people set up their scripts that need to kind of be on their own, mostly system scripts like the game manager. And what they do is they create a loader. So how we'll do that is we're going to create an empty object in our world hierarchy, and I'm just going to call this loader. And what we can do with this loader is basically any script that we're going to need to set up to have this scene run, we can simply drag and drop onto this loader and it's good to go. It'll load up when the scene starts, which is why it's called a loader. So let's grab our game manager and drop it onto the loader component. And we can just change the loader to 000, just because I like having it there. Now that we've got this loader hooked up with a game manager, you'll notice there's no current player. That's an easy fix. We're just going to go into our location based game. So expand that and we're going to grab our player. And let's just drag it on here. And we're done. That was it. Easy, right? Now our game manager is hooked up to our player and it's accessible for anything that needs to get to that player for whatever scene it's in. This is going to be especially useful for things like the UI manager, where it needs to know what the player's level is, how much experience they have, how much experience they need. And eventually, when we create the menu with items like inventory and captured droids and all of that, it's going to need to know that info as well. So adding that to the game manager just creates a really easy, uniform, and developer-friendly way to manage our scripts and provide functionality to everything in our game. So this is actually really cool. Now that we've got a game manager on the scene, we've got a really reliable way for other components to access the player and any other important information we decide that we want to provide globally later on.
Most importantly, as we switch between scenes, we now have a way to get player data without having to do a whole bunch of unnecessary save and load cycles, where, for example, we'd save all the player data to some kind of save file and then reload it and then resave it and then reload it every time we went between a scene. We don't have to do that anymore. And especially if those calls are being made over a network, we've just saved ourselves a lot of time and possibly money, depending on what you're using for a backend. So now that that's wrapped up, we can call this video good. Great job following along and creating your game manager script. I'm excited to move on and continue with this game. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.